Hey, what's up, everyone? So I want to give my two cents on uh, the Paris Games Week that's actually going on right now. And uh, the PlayStation conference I actually watched yesterday. It streamed yesterday. I was at my friend's the whole day. But uh, we, put it, uh, we put it up on his TV, and, you know, uh, we watched it together. And I want to get my thoughts on, you know, what they revealed at the conference. It's a pretty decent conference. Um, nothing amazing, 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 but they did have a lot of really great release, uh, uh, actual news, you know, in there for uh, upcoming stuff and games. So it's going to be pretty cool. So I'm just going to go through here, and uh, I have a list here on my computer. I'm just going to talk about, you know, the stuff that they revealed. Um, so uh, Street Fighter V is, has a release date finally. It's February 16th. I don't know why they chose to release it a week before two major games, Deus Ex and Mirror's Edge Catalyst, uh, but it's coming out February 16th. Dalsim has uh, actually been confirmed, uh, which is pretty cool. They had like a trailer for him. Uh, he's one of my favorite characters, so that was kind of nice to see. Uh, I'm definitely going to get Street Fighter V. I'm, I'm kind of torn between uh, either getting it on PS4 or PC, to be honest with you. Um, what I made, because I know uh, what's really interesting about this one is even though it's an exclusive, console exclusive to PS4, uh, there is cross-play between PC and PS4, so it's, it actually doesn't really matter for me. I should just get it on PC for the 4K quality, but um, it was pretty cool. It's nice to see, you know, the game's coming out fairly soon, and uh, this first quarter of 2016 is, is packed. It's, it's way too packed. Do you have... February, you have like four major games now. You have Street Fighter, you have Far Cry Primal, you have Mirror's Edge Catalyst, you have Deus Ex. Next month, you got Uncharted 4, you got The Division, um, I think Dark Souls 3, too. It's like there's too many games coming out within the first three months of next year. It's ridiculous. But moving on, uh, after Street Fighter 5, the guy who's in charge of the Tekken series actually came out. And they announced that Taken, they announced Taken Seven, which supposedly is like a prequel to the original Taken, and uh, it's coming to the PlayStation Four. It's going to be compatible with PlayStation VR, which is you know the previous Project Morpheus uh, headset. Uh, what are my thoughts as far as me? Will I get a PlayStation VR? Yes, probably just to test it out. I don't think it's going to be anything crazy. Um, but I just want to get it just to test it out because, hey, playing some games, maybe Tekken 7 is going to be really good on it. Maybe uh, other games are going to be pretty cool on it. And then they announced some really cool exclusive games that are going to be only working with the PlayStation VR that we're going to talk about really, really soon. So they did that. Um, they also showed up some more Star Wars Battlefront. We got to see uh, all the different characters like Han Solo, Princess Leia. Uh, you can play as um, Counselor Palpatine. Um... You know, and all these different characters that, that you can really play as. And they also uh, showed some new gameplay footage of uh, some of the new maps. They showed, like, the Forest of Endor, which to me looks really freaking awesome on the Frostbite engine. So uh, that's pretty cool just to see more Star Wars Battlefront. You know, we, we played the beta. We all pretty much know what to expect from the game. So it's going to be pretty cool. Um, they also, there's also this game called Boundless that's heading to, you know, the PlayStation 4. Um... I can here. I'm gonna watch the. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try and remember. Okay, what kind of game was Boundless? Boundless, Boundless. Oh, Boundless was that. Yeah, this is like an exploration game that you could transport to different, you know, um, dimensions, which is pretty interesting. Uh, we were watching it, and it almost looks like Minecraft for a sec. Not the graphic style, but you have like a hammer, and you're walking around in these different dimensions. And uh, supposedly, it's you're going to be balancing between these different dimensions, and there's an exploration aspect to the game. They just announced it, so it's a PS4 exclusive. Um, actually, it's going to be. It says here, "One Strike to Velvet." Okay, so it's a cross-platform title for PC, actually. But I guess some that, that's weird because usually at the beginning of the trailers on the conference, they're like, "Oh, PlayStation exclusive." Maybe they get like first access. I have no idea. But that game looks interesting. I'm going to give it a try. Uh, no Man's Skies has a release date for June 2016, um, which is pretty good. People were speculating that they're going to secretly release it this week, to which I say there's barely been any footage of the game. Why would they release it this week? Um, but it's coming next year. They're probably, I, I swear to you, they're probably going to release it E3 week. They're probably going to you know, come out on stage and be like, hey guys, uh, thanks for joining E3, and the game's out, go get it. And they're probably going to release it E3, E3 week. Um, what's really interesting is that I don't think many people realize No Man's Sky is a full $60 game. It's actually a full retail package. You can actually, 
you can go on Amazon right now and type in uh, No Man's Sky, and it's a full, um, it was there, now it's gone, No Man's Sky game. All right, well, No Man's Sky was there. Maybe maybe, it, maybe it's a digital download, okay. On Amazon, like a while ago, it, it, they had a uh, physical, you know, listing posted for it, and it was $60, so I was a bit surprised that it was a $60 game, unless that was a mistake. So, whatever. Um, it's gonna be releasing on PS4 and PC simultaneously. Um, it's a timed exclusive, though, on um, PS4, so just keep that in mind. Timed console exclusive on PS4. But it is coming to PC, which is interesting. Uh, Vinci uh, also really, uh, came out with this game called Vector. Um, it's like a musical harmony kind of game. I don't care, really. Uh, but, you know, th there was that. Uh, New Horizon Zero Dawn gameplay. Um, they actually showed uh, some of the cool robotic dinosaurs and, you know, uh, the... The, the, the cool footage, they, they showed off like photo mode and things like that that's going to be in the game. And just showing off the pure detail. That game's going to be pretty cool. I'm really excited to, to see it. They showed off a bit of the crafting system as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to when that game releases sometime in 2016. Drive Club uh, Bikes came out yesterday. They, they just announced this new expansion for Drive Club. It's like a $15 expansion if you own the game. If you want to buy it separate, it's $20. It's called Drive Club Bikes. Basically, it's just gives you motorcycles to race in. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna get it because I already beat Drive Club a long time ago and right now I'm busy with other games so I probably will not get it to be honest with you unless it's on sale down the road or something. Uh, this new game called Matterfall, um, they showed a, um, a CGI trailer for this and it looked like really good. I, I was saying to my friend, right, I'm like, this looks really good. And then, and then like, you know, a few minutes into the trailer I was like, watch this be a 2D platformer. And I swear to you, I swear, it, it may as well just be a 2D platformer, which is kind of... Uh, it's from the developers of Resogun. Resogun was a good game. Um, but that was like, you know, an arcade-style 2D game. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping that Matterfall isn't just a 2D, you know... Uh, 2D, uh, you know, adventure game or whatever. I, I hope it actually has, like, some third-person comp... Oh, excuse me, some third-person combat. And uh, something a little bit more, you know triple A than just arcade -y. but it looked good, it looked interesting. Uh, Gravity Rush 2, they've announced that it's officially coming to North America. This was to be expected, to be honest with you guys. Um, but they showed off, um, it's actually coming on February 9th, keep that in mind. Um, and they're again coming out within the first quarter of the year. Uh, they showed off a new trailer, they showed off some gameplay. It looks good, like the graphics itself um, look pretty good. It's not, um, if uh, some of you, probably most of you guys never played the first Gravity Rush because it was a Vita exclusive. It's coming to the PS4, they're gonna make, they're gonna port it to the PS4. Gravity Rush 1 was probably the best PlayStation Vita game to this day still. And, uh, it was just, it was just an overall really good game. You had a really interesting character, uh, some cool story. You had like this really cool open world that was very artistic. So, Gravity Rush 2, I'm really hoping, um, it's gonna be pretty, it's gonna really take that and just go further and with better graphics because of the console space, higher frame rate and things like that. And uh, that game comes out February 9th once again. I'm definitely going to pick it up. All right. Um, then Media Molecule came out with their crap called Dreams. I'm sorry, who's interested in this, really? This is, I, I don't even know what it is. And it, it, like they showed off gameplay, but I'm like, what is this? It's like, it doesn't look like anything. It's it's one of the most frustrating things ever. It's like, I feel like, I feel like Media Molecule is like a daycare center that just makes games. Like, that's what I really feel like. It's, it, I don't, there's like, uh, there's really no words to describe my, my frustrated feelings on what this game it dreams is and it doesn't look interesting whatsoever it looks weird and just uh, who's please honestly if you're interested in the game tell me why I really want to know like how, how anyone is even interested in this crap but okay so they did that and then uh, Naughty Dog came out and uh, they, they actually unveiled the Uncharted 4 multiplayer for the first time they showed a trailer um, people are kind of being a little bit negative about it. I'm not gonna be so negative about it, but I will say this. It looks weird. It doesn't look 
like a more conventional Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3 multiplayer, it looks very weird. Like, if you've actually seen gameplay, and there's some gameplay up on YouTube from people who played it, right? If you've actually seen gameplay, it looks very... Like, like the way it controls looks very floaty, you know? And, and you, when you see, you know, Drake run, it's like... It's, it's weird, like, his legs look like they're made of, like, um elastic bands or something like that it's if, if you just seen gameplay some of the animations look a bit weird it's pre-release you know it just looks weird to me the multiplayer it looks weird um very like so the maps are actually very small they're not kind of medium size how they were in the previous uncharted games they're fairly small and um i'm, I'm really hoping that you know the, the multiplayer really turns out to be really good because you know i, I really want to get into the uncharted for multiplayer again um, just because I love the Uncharted multiplayer to begin with. So, uh, hopefully, you know, what, uh, when we play the beta in like a month, you know, it, it'll turn out to be fine. But it looks really odd. There's like some supernatural stuff you can, um, t you can call in AI people, uh, AI partners to like help you out. You play as different characters and things like that. All the characters have returned. You have Cutter, you have Chloe, um, you have... You know, all the villains, you had Marlo in there. They didn't show off, uh, they, they didn't obviously show off the villain for Uncharted 4 yet. They haven't, they haven't showed off the villain whatsoever for Uncharted 4, so it's kind of being a secret. We're gonna finally, finally see who it is that's, you know, taking care of everything. Um, then they announced a uh, PlayStation VR exclusive for Until Dawn. It's called uh, Russia Blood. It's a freaking roller coaster ride. I'm not kidding you. Like, you sit down. You put your you know VR headset on, and it's like you're going through a roller coaster ride. But there's like mini games that have to do with Until Dawn. It's like a carnival for Until Dawn themes. It looks like crap. Um, I would have rather them done like a full DLC expansion for Until Dawn, since I really liked Until Dawn. But this, you know, PlayStation VR. It was like a rumor, and now it's been confirmed. So whatever. Now Crytek came up after this, and Crytek is known for creating beautiful games that are mediocre, like very mediocre, right? They used to be a great developer and then something happened between, something happened weird and, and now now they're like, uh. so they announced this new game called Robinson the Journey. It's a PlayStation VR exclusive, completely exclusive that they said it's not gonna be coming to any other platform. And there's dinosaurs in it. And immediately to me, that, that immediately interests me because dinosaurs have been so absent from the game space. We're on the sci-fi craze right now. And it's like, I want dinosaurs to come back. You know, I want like another Turok game. I want like, you know, I want that, that game, that Primal Carnage Genesis game to be made. You know, it's like, I, I want all these games to come back with dinosaurs. Robinson the Journey looks really good. It's a first person, like I said, VR game, but there's dinosaurs in it. And, uh has a bit of a sci-fi, you know, setting. You have some weird orb that's kind of telling you what to do. Um, it looks good. I'm really, I'm gonna play it. I'm, I'm obviously gonna play it. It's a PlayStation VR exclusive, like I said, so you have to get one in order to play it, but I definitely wanna get, um, play that game just because I love dinosaur games. Gran Turismo Sport was announced. This is not Gran Turismo 7, and this is not Gran Turismo 7 Prologue. This is a spin-off game that's coming to PS4 in, uh, in 2016. There is a beta that's coming in early 2016 as well. Um, Gran Turismo has been absent for quite some time and uh, what's interesting is that actually 2013 was it? Gran Turismo 6 launched in December 2013. Okay. Um, here's the thing. Gran Turismo used to be one of my favorite racing series. Like it used to be my favorite racing series of all time, right? And Gran, Gran Turismo 5 Prologue came out, and I really loved it. Gran Turismo 5 came out, and it was one of the worst, most disappointing games I've ever played in my life. It, it honestly sucked. And they released Gran Turismo 6, and I didn't care for it either. Like, I just thought it was a piece of crap. Because Gran Turismo focused on quantity more than quality. The fact that you had, like, oh, there's, like, a thousand cars, but, some of, but most of them had, like, shitty graphics and textures. You didn't have a cockpit view. And it's, like... It, it was a piece of crap, and so Forza came up, and Forza, you know, has continued to put out excellent games. I'm really hoping that Gran Turismo can come back and redeem itself, because the series have just it, it turned into a piece of crap for me, even though it was like one of my favorite racing, it was my favorite racing game at one point, and then the new games just came out, and, and they sucked. 
they, they again they focused on quantity rather than quality. So I'm really hoping that you know they Gran Turismo Sport turns out to be really good. PS4 should provide excellent graphics for that, and uh, there's a beta coming in early 2016. I am definitely going to get Gran Turismo Sport. See how it goes. This new game called Wild was pretty interesting. Um, it's it's sort of like Far Cry Primal, but better. It's like third person. You can call in um, bears, and you can control the animals in the wildlife to get things done. Looks good. It's it's complete. Like I said, it's completely open world, so um, it's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, and yeah, it's. I looked at Far Cry Primal, right? I look at Far Cry Primal. I'm like, okay. And then I look at this game. I'm like, well, this game looks more interesting, even though they're both, you know. Um, Primordial, so I hope. Uh, well, I don't know when Wild Wild comes out in 2016. I want to say um, I'm not exactly sure, but it looked pretty good. I was I was a little bit impressed by it, and you can control you know, different ways to do your missions and things like that. So it's gonna be pretty good. And then um, Quantic Dream came out finally, and they revealed um, their new game for PS4, which I'm super excited for. It's called Detroit Become Human. And if you guys remember the Kara Tech demo that was released for PS3 for Beyond Two Souls years ago, everyone wanted them to make a game out of that, out of the Kara Tech demo, just because the, the concept of it, the, the demo, was so, like, an, an emotional phenomenon. It was like, it was like showing, it's meant to show off graphics, but it had, like, this great underlying story underneath, and you really cared for, the, you know, this character Kara, this robot. And, uh... Everyone wanted him to make a game out of it, and he was like, ah, oh, no, we're not going to do that. Well, it turns out that after Beyond Two Souls, they began working on Detroit Become Human to continue the story of what happened um, after Kara when she left the, you know, the um, facility that, that she was built in. So, this looks awesome. I can't wait for it. I, I'm just so, I'm such in the mood to play, like, another, you know, Quantic Dream game. It, it's been, you know... 2013, it seems like a while ago, but um, this should be, uh, Detroit should be out in 2016, to be honest with you guys. I believe it should, maybe 2017, but we'll see. Um, they also uh, have Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls actually coming to the PlayStation 4, and that's actually been playable. So I don't know when it's going to be on the PlayStation 4. Um, it's, they're not saying when it's going to be on the PlayStation 4, but... Uh, that's definitely gonna be something I'm gonna want to pick up. They have like a Quantic Dream collection or something for PS4. Yeah, I'll definitely pick it up because I want to. I want to replay those games with better graphics. You know, that's gonna be awesome. But yeah, it looks really good. I'm really looking forward to Detroit, and uh, it's gonna be pretty awesome. And that was pretty much it, to be honest with you guys. That was the Sony um, PlayStation conference. So they had a lot of great, you know, announcements. Actually, to be honest with you guys, every almost everything that they announced was an exclusive in some way. Um, Detroit was obviously my, my favorite number one thing. Um, Wild looked interesting, Gran Turismo Sport was awesome, Robinson the Journey looked good. Um, Uncharted 4 multiplayer was a bit odd, I'm hoping that'll redeem itself when we play it. Um, Gravity Rush 2, great, Matterfall looks interesting, Drive Club expansion, awesome, Horizon Zero Dawn gameplay, yes. Uh, no Man's Sky coming out next year, let's... That's awesome. I, I, I really want to... I'm, I'm not sure if there's a story for No Man's Sky. I don't think there is. It's more of an exploration game, but we'll see. Boundless, awesome. Battlefront, awesome. Tekken 7, awesome. Street Fighter 5, awesome. And that's pretty much it. So, good announcements. Um, I think it was a pretty decent conference overall, and uh, I'm really looking forward to all the games that are coming out. So, all right. Those were my thoughts, and I just wanted to record my quick impressions regarding all those. Let me know what you guys thought. What was your favorite thing? Uh, what would you guys think of Detroit? Would you guys think of Uncharted Multiplayer? Would you guys think of, you know, all the games, Taken 7, things like that? So let me know. All right. Have a good one, and I'll talk to you all later.